Hi, I'm here today with Dr. Al Volker. He is the Assistant Superintendent of Academic Services at Raymore Peculiar School District. Welcome, thanks for coming. No, thank you for having me. I understand by talking to Doug and uh, talking to Kim that you've already put on a program, very well attended, on the uh, topic of mental health. Mm -hmm. um, when I, when I heard the description of your program and I heard the word trauma, mm -hmm. it really got my attention. Mm -hmm. But I, tell me something about what is the full scope of the mental health program? Well, we discussed this morning just the growing needs of mm -hmm. mental health you'll see across our school districts, across the state of Missouri, and truly across the country. Mm -hmm. We're just having students come to us with multiple levels of trauma, with mental health needs that in the past we just didn't see those numbers. So mm -hmm. we're having to address that by building structure and programs that'll support them. What came to your attention that said we have a problem? What caused that? Because I'm sure it's not new. No, but it's not new, but it's organic. When you uh -huh. come and your principals and your teachers mm -hmm. are coming to you and say, we need more supports, our students mm -hmm. are coming to us with greater needs, mm -hmm. and that is just an ongoing process. If you have a school district that has multiple feedback loops where your teachers mm -hmm. have an opportunity to talk to their principals and the principals have an opportunity to talk to us at district leadership, this problem will be talked about mm -hmm. because it's so evident in our schools today. Well, I guess the mental health uh, trauma can really uh, splinter out in different forms. One is school safety, of course. Oh, absolutely. The other one is academics. School safety has been talked about for quite a bit. Why don't you talk about how it affects academics? Oh, that's a good point. I think with academics, having students prepared to learn we've always addressed students so they'll come we'll feed them breakfast if they need it um, if they come and they don't have supplies school mm -hmm. districts are prepared to do that but with social and emotional learning when students weren't coming prepared mentally to learn that they were thinking about the crisis or the topics or the trauma that really is present in their homes today they weren't ready to learn as well so we realized we had to design structures and programs so they would feel ready and equipped to learn so at your district, is the program uh, centralized in, in one location or is it dispersed in each of the buildings? That's a good question. We want this training and we want our staff to be trauma informed and mm -hmm. understand trauma at all levels. Mm -hmm. So we don't have a program for students that bring students that, to work specifically with trauma students in a one location. We've really practiced kind of the train the trainer model. Mm -hmm. We've taken our district leadership out to various locations to get trauma training to be mm -hmm. trauma informed and trauma sensitive. Mm -hmm. And then we've come back and trained our principals. So we have a monthly principals meeting. We talk about what it looks like to be trauma informed, what policies, what practices do we have to have, trained our principals, and then they've gone out and worked with their individual staff. So it's been in every building. So we have mm -hmm. 12 buildings across the district. So we've been able to get that out into all our buildings so our staff feels prepared. So with the ESSA Act, you know, the uh, Every Student Succeed, mm -hmm. where um, the parent engagement is really mm -hmm. important. It seems like the student comes to the school with the trauma that they receive, maybe not at school, maybe at the home. Yes. So how broad is your reach in dealing with this issue? It needs to be pretty broad. <laughs> and, and it was so, wasn't something I think we were prepared for as a school district. Uh -huh. we, you know, we, we, this is what we can control. What we realized and what we started to do is community outreach on this topic is absolutely necessary. Mm -hmm. So our district formed we, what we call a good neighbor, strong community, community engagement um, event. Mm -hmm. So it, actually it's next Saturday, November 17th. Wow. So we have our, invited our entire community in. Uh, we have three, 400 people signed mm -hmm. up to come to our high school to wow. engage in multiple learning sessions. Mm -hmm. uh, they can pick, it can be on trauma, it could be on suicide prevention, it could be on anti-bullying, it could be on just safety in general. And they're able to come experience some of those breakout sessions and just have the conversation together. Mm -hmm. We're really trying to do two things, destigmatize mental health, oh. and then understand it takes a community conversation to actually solve the problem. Mm -hmm. And it's it's not a it's a journey mm -hmm. I mean, we're going to be working through this for a number of years but you've got to engage your community in the conversation to really make inroads how long has this program been in effect well district? this is our second year for okay. the good neighbors it's fairly new okay. i think we've been working in general for the past four or five years our trauma sensitive efforts our trauma trying mm -hmm. to become a trauma informed school district we're in year three of mm -hmm. that process and it is a process so we don't think we're going to end we don't think there is a we finally reached this magic threshold of understanding, we're gonna to continue to learn and grow. 
we just realized we needed to engage all staff and we need to engage our community in the, in the conversation as well. Well, I'm sure you see the, uh, the successes uh, shown in the academic uh, achievement, mm -hmm. and, but you've only been a couple years yes. into it, so it's you don't have a strong a baseline <laughs> yes. to compare that to. Yeah. But I was really fascinated when you were saying you, you have this program, it's next Saturday, where 300 uh, parents will come mm -hmm. to this event. As we all know, the people that should be there don't come. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> How do you reach all these people? Because you only have a limited amount of resources, right. and you have to teach. I think that what we've really, the way we've approached that is if we educate the broader community, mm -hmm. so let's say those people that we really would like to come don't come, mm -hmm. but the broader community, their neighbors, their friends, their support network is educated, then those people will get supports. They will be able to go to someone who is informed. So we thought, you know, if we can't get everybody to come, if we engage the broader community and just grow our community knowledge base on the topic, if we destigmatize mental health in conversations that are being had at home and in mm -hmm. the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. You know, if people come up and say, I'm feeling this way, I don't know what to do about it, and you've got an engaged community member that said, well, it's interesting, I went to a community forum and there are these resources out oh, there. Oh, I see. Um, we're just trying to grow that one person at a time. Mm -hmm. And in a community of 30,000 or so, yeah, it might it take us a couple years? So yes. how do you avoid the stigma of, of someone saying, well, I would go, but eh, I, I don't want to be seen going yeah I think that, I think that's real I think you have to continue to have the conversation and make it a, a an acceptable topic to uh -huh. talk about I see so we in our communications through our district we send home updates we talk about mental health we talk about suicide prevention programs we mm -hmm. talk with our board of education regularly mm -hmm. they are our, our established connected community members mm -hmm. and when they are open to having these conversations and they have destigmatized mental health, it spreads throughout the community. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, one of the norms I've seen over the years is that the, the, the person that has a problem always says, nah, I'm okay, Yeah, I'm okay. How do you reach that, that student who you, you know has a trauma in their life, mm -hmm. but says, nah, I'm okay, yeah, I'm okay, I don't and, and, and they're not? You still, you break down the walls. Mm -hmm. You really do. You continue to break down the walls of acceptance when they see their friends, when they see I their see. peers it's the cool willing to, to gauge in the comp. That's absolutely right. Uh -huh. You know, when you build a, you build a, a strong mm -hmm. academic community when it's the cool thing to do to study, mm -hmm. it's the same thing in the area of mental health. Mm -hmm. when, you, when it's the cool thing to do to support your friends, mm -hmm. when it's the cool thing to do to build a classroom culture that's connected, mm -hmm. to build a school culture that's connected, then you're going to be successful. And that's simply what we're trying to do. It's not simple, yeah. but that's simply what we're trying to do. Well, it seems like that's that's more acceptable these days with mm. students in terms of diversity, yes. in terms of a whole number of issues that back in the day, it, it wasn't as open and acceptable. I was judging a friend, <laughs> totally separate, but I was judging a forensics and debate tournament this weekend for other uh, local school districts that came to yeah. compete. And the students talking about the topics, so they were able to ah. select was very eye-opening. Huh. I truly believe that our students are prepared to have these conversations now. More than the adults. More than the adults. <laughs> so when, when we can accept that as the adults, when we can have those conversations and realize our kids are ready. So we had a teen forum, Dr. Barr, our director of secondary education, uh -huh. put together a teen forum for our ninth graders. And so they came in and we posed a question to them. How do we support students' mental health? How do we support mental wellness? How do we uh -huh. grow mental wellness? And we posed that to our freshmen. And then they broke out with community leaders okay, and with business entrepreneurs into small groups and designed structures to try and solve the problem. Huh. And their solutions, the ninth grade solutions, were incredible. Uh -huh. And they talked about apps so they could be more connected. They talked about structures within the day. They talked about taking one day a month, maybe an early release day, maybe a half day. And then the rest of the afternoon was just breakout sessions on the topics. And these are from 15-year-olds. You could roll that into a pedagogy. Yes, I'm <laughs> telling you. We just looked back and said, boy, why didn't we do that sooner? Yeah, yeah. You know, we didn't engage the students. Yeah, so it was really. Thank you.